Hey crafty people, Ashley here, and today we have another Make It With Ashley session, and we are working with the fabulous paper collection, and it is scary, sweet, spooky fun. Um, so let's go ahead and get to our projects. Flip this around. There we go. Um, so this paper collection was a lot of fun to play with. Um, I was able to use up all of the scraps, so I made some, some cards with it. Um, I also made some extra layouts. Um, right, using this up, using some silver embossing. I did switch over that single layer, that single layout um, that had a bunch of photos. And then this was another bonus layout that I made. This one didn't use any of the paper, but it did use that stamp set quite a bit along with some other retired stamp sets. Um, so I had a lot of fun using up this entire pack, which is always a good feeling not to have any leftovers. So let's go ahead and get into layout number, it's actually layout number two. So layout number one is the single layout. Okay. Um, and I do have a YouTube video for that one. We are going to start with layout two. Uh, here we go. Okay. And so this one is going to be on peach. So I already have everything pre-cut, ready to go. Um, and I already picked my photos out for this. And then the way this is going to work, we are going to start on the light side of peach, and then I am going to do some stamping. Okay, so I'm going to have um, my Versamat, which I'm going to bring in. I'm on the light side of peach, and then I am going to need the fabulous stamp set. Now, um, this stamp set comes with the workshop bundle. Okay, you can also order them separate depending on which pieces you liked. Um, I think I didn't order the workshop, I ordered the product bundle um, because I already had the extra paper I needed for the workshop. Um, I think that's the only difference. Okay, uh, okay so we are going to do this cute little ghost and he is going to be peeking up underneath our corner. So I'm going to want my foam squishy, that way we get a nice good impression. Sorry, there's kind of like a little funky mark right there. So I am going to turn it so it'll be hidden by my paper. And then um, we are gonna go ahead and grab our intense black ink. And then I've already used this a couple times, so um, it's I don't need to season it or anything. So I've got a lot of use out of this one. So I'm gonna ink it up. And then this little ghost, so the reason I'm using my verse mat is so I can kind of match it up. Um, we want to be four and a half inches in, and then we want to be about three quarters of an inch down, and this little guy is just going to be like, boo. He's just peeking right over, okay? Uh, and then I have my stamp chamois, and I'm just going to wipe that clean and set that aside. Uh, next is going to be coloring in his, his little face. All right, and then that is going to be with the brown gray shades. Uh, and it's a tri-blend marker. And if you've never used the tri-blend markers, these are awesome. You get three colors in one, and it's a light, medium, and a dark, perfect for shading. And actually, um, I was looking at them. You can get, there's two different bundles. One of the bundles is on Amazon for like 45 bucks, and that's for 24 markers which if you are looking to get a set of alcohol blending markers, I would check that out. Um, so I'm going to color in his eyes and I'm using that light shade first. Okay. And then I'm going to go back in um, with the dark shade around the edges. And this is just going to give him some kind of like dimension. And then I'm going to go back in with the light and I'm going to go ahead and blend them together. So I use small little circles to kind of blend. All right. 
Uh, and then our other marker color that we're using today is going to be, uh, it's the Coral Blend. Okay. And so our Coral Blend, that's going to give us those pink cheeks. Now since this is already on pink, I'm going to go ahead and go for the darker one because I want it to kind of stand out. And how cute is that? His like little blush. Okay. So that's kind of the only prep work we need for this. So I can kind of move my squishy aside. And then we can start with our, uh, I think these are some of my pieces. I, I like to lay them out, uh, make sure I'm not missing anything before I do a live event. All right, um, ooh, other things, I have just switched over to the Tombow Mono Air. Um, I had a different Tombow adhesive that I had a stockpile of and I finally ran out. And this one, oh my God, I love it. It works so, so well. Okay, um, I like that it's not just a strip, it's kind of like a bunch of like small interlocking dots. Uh, but this strip with the uh, frames is going to go on the left hand side. And then next is going to be um, this little zip strip here. So this is going to go um, right up against that. So I do like how quick and easy these layouts um, are. All right, so we're gonna slide this up against, there we go, nice and flat. And then next up, let's see here, we have our the polka dots, then we have our green, and then we have this guy up here, okay? Now, I do wanna make sure I stamped him up high enough. Um, which he is just barely gonna peek over. <clears throat> so, um, I did three quarters of an edge. If you're following along, it might have been a better idea to do just a little bit higher. Okay, so this one is going to be, where is it? I want to say it is, let me double check my measurements. Yeah, it's supposed to be one inch from the bottom. Okay. And so he's just barely, barely peeking out. So I do want to see just a little bit more. So I'm going to do seven eighths of an inch instead of three quarters, just to make sure my ghost is peeking. So if you haven't stamped this yet, I would do them just a little bit higher because I feel like if you see more of the ghost, I don't have issues with that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start with this dot again. I just said I'm going to be seven eighths of an inch and then I'm going to work my way up from there and there we go so just nice and flush the versamat makes it easy to line up and have those measurements but I really love this Halloween paper. I don't know. I really like the bottles. I was kind of sad I didn't get a stamp set of just these bottles. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So that is kind of our base. So next thing we need to do, um, let's see, can bring in some of my pieces that we have here. So we are going to have some photo mats. We have photo mats and then a journaling. Where are we? Something's there. It is. Aha! I figured it out. Oh. The white one's my journaling square. <clears throat> okay, and that is going to go on the paprika, and we are going to do some stamping onto here. Um, before I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and run out of tape and have to put a new one in. Aha! I was ready and already had one out of the package. Okay. But you can see um, how these go in. Oops. If I, there it is, if I line up the hole. It's got a little um, rod here, and so you kind of just line it up in the hole, and it slides right in. They're pretty easy to use. There we go. Um, but I don't know about you, um, the old mono uh, or Tombow tape runners, I would sometimes get like these goobers and they would like stick. And this one, I've been using it for quite a bit now, and nothing and it always runs I'm not wasting any tape so I really um, I really like these and I am I'm not going back so okay so then we get to make our journaling card and our journaling card is going to bring in some more of that stamp set 
So I'm going to bring my squishy back and then I'm just going to have my journaling. Okay. I'm going to put my ghost away and I'm going to bring out this corner spider web. I really like that it is perfect for going over pictures. Okay. All right. Okay. So there is my spider web. Again, he is well loved. I'm going to ink him up with my, um, my black ink. This is my, what is it? Intense black. I don't know. I couldn't think of the word intense. It is Friday, y'all. I am so ready for this weekend. So I am stamping this so that he is in the corner and fitting, but still kind of filling up the whole thing. Okay. I always like to wipe things clean. Okay. Put that away. And then my next is the uh, So Ghoul We're Friends. Okay. And then I also need my peach ink. So, so ghoul we're friends, or so glad we're such ghoul friends, my bad. All right, I am going to line that up there. And this is going to go up in this little top part here. Okay, so... So that is going to simply get stamped right on top, right? So glad we're such ghoul friends. Put that away. And then a journaling lines, okay? So when I do my journaling lines, I like to bring in a ruler. And then I grab one of my journaling pens, okay? Now, um, this one, I'm just going to do my journaling from kind of this this spider web line over. So what I do is I line up my card with my verse mat. And then I also want to line up my ruler. Okay? So I am going to do um generally a quarter inch shy from inside the spider web and from the edge and then I will scooch down and I am going to repeat the process. Okay. Also make sure you're straight. This is where the Versamat comes in. There we go. Because I can just follow the lines, scooch it down, and repeat until I have all of those nice, perfect journaling lines. Um, other ideas is obviously you can use a picture of my life card for these. Um, you could have printed your journaling and then cut it down to this size. How much more do I have? Oh, I have quite a bit more. Okay. But using your ruler and I line up the edges so that way I am consistent. Oh, crud. Okay. So I did that, so I'm probably going to cover that up with a um, sticker of some kind. All right, but that is my journaling, and I'll, I will journal later, because no one, no one wants to watch me just journal. Okay, but we all make goofs, and we'll see how I cover that up. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and put some there, and stamp this down. All right. And then as far as placement, thanks, Anita. Um, oh, actually, I'm now realizing I forgot to grab a sticker, okay? So we are going to grab one of these stickers. We're going to use one on the other side, one on this one. And so I'm just going to simply sync that up on the left side of my paper. I am going to just stamp it a stamp it, press it down, and then I'm going to cut the excess off with my scissors. And then this I will put back on my sticker sheet. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've used like everything of this paper pack, but I might be able to find a reason, um, some way to use these uh, last little bits of stamps. Okay, so these you can notice will fit just inside this black Okay, 
and then these are going to hang over a little bit. All right, so that way you can see those cute little bottles. So I'm gonna go ahead and push these down into place. So this was fun. Um, we did a Halloween party. I have a cousin that we don't get to see very often. So all the kids were getting together. So we decided to do a giant family Halloween party. So we did a bunch of Halloween games, made cupcakes, had fun Halloween food. Um, this And that's a wonderful picture of my toddler eating a cupcake, just deciding everyone else is eating them like normal. And nope. I'm going to face first it, so got to love kids. All right, we do have some stickers to embellish this, but I'm going to go ahead and create the right side, and then we can add the stickers for the whole layout. Okay, um, always important to make sure you are starting with the same side of paper. So I am on the light side of peach, okay? And this one does not have any stamping. So we are gonna start with um, this this cute little hero paper that has all these like kitty cats and um, and uh, what do you call it potion bottles and candy and tombstones kind of thing. So this one was fun. I actually fussy cut all the scraps from these and I used these as an embellishment on one of my extra layouts. So don't be afraid to fussy cut things. And even, um, side note, I fussy cut, like, see how the cat's ear or part of the shapes are cut off? Doesn't matter. I just made my clusters so that those parts were hidden under other pieces. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that's just straight on the right-hand side, and then we are going to work our way from the bottom up. Now, again, you'd normally be one inch from the bottom, but remember my ghost I wanted him to peek out a little bit more so I lowered this down I did mine at seven eighths of an inch you can also just simply bring your other page in and then you can let me scooch that up so it's easier to see and then you can make sure it's nice and lined up all right perfect and then we're just repeating that same pattern up. Again, um, you can see what sides that you use. I believe this is Seabrook, um, and I use the darker side on mine for both. Now there are some times where you do wanna alternate and use different sides. Um, just, to... something is wrong. This is longer. Why is this longer? I do not know why this is longer. I didn't realize that. I did not catch that. Huh. Okay, but that one's the right size. Okay, I'll just trim that with my scissor. That's so weird. I didn't even catch that when I was checking my paper. Hmm. Anyone else who cut theirs out? Is theirs longer also, or is it just a, a spoof on mine? So. Okay. Um, and then we are going to simply just glue down onto our photo mats. That was fun. I got to dress up as Belle, who's one of my favorite Disney princesses. Um, I ended up dressing up again for Halloween. So I have quite a few pictures of me in this Belle dress, which I do not mind at all. Uh, all the cousins had so much fun getting to play together. Um, <laughs> we did uh, pin the eye on the monster. So all the kids, they spun around however old they were. Um, so if you were 11 or 11 times versus, um, James, uh, he was two at the time and, uh, he, he, we spun him around twice and he didn't even have to wear, a, a uh, whatever, a eye patch blindfold that one. And, uh, he still, you can see, he did not make it in the center where the Cyclops eyeball was supposed to be, but you can, that was a fun one. Um, so you'll probably, I will probably add that into my journaling. Okay, so then this is going to come down here, right? So I'm repeating that pattern, same placement. Actually, I need to bring in my sticker just like last time. I keep wanting to forget this sticker. Oh no, it's that got that little 
corner got stuck to that um, that centerpiece. Okay. All right, so this is going to line up on the inside edge. There we go. And we are going to work our way across. We'll snip it, and then I can place it back onto my sticker sheet for some other funness to, to do. Okay. But those are going to go there, and then these are going to come here. Okay. Halloween is definitely one of my favorite holidays. We always had uh, like a haunted house and um, we would, my brother and I would like make decorations and my, my parents were all in it. And my brother has a November birthday, so he would sometimes celebrate early and have a Halloween party for his birthday. So. Uh, okay, so we have our photos going across and I'm just trying to stay consistent with that gap between them kind of like that eighth inch gap okay all right so then now let's bring them both in and actually hold on um, I'm just gonna flip this over now the reason I'm flipping this over if you look at how your scissors are um, the top or that flat part there it's going to be easier for me to run that flush with my paper. If I cut it right side up, it's kind of like it's my scissors are then upside down in a way. Um, and I can't get as nice a flat edge. Okay, I also could have put this in my paper trimmer. All right, so let's see here. Can I scooch out a little bit more? Okay, there we go. All right, trying to get both layouts. And I don't know, I just love this little picture frame. That, that's, yeah, okay. All right, so I am gonna bring in um, some foam tape. So this is from Shaker Cards. Use that to pop some stuff up and give some extra dimension. And we are gonna start with our three little um, tombstones. Okay, ghouls just wanna have fun. I think that's so cute. All right, so ghouls just want to have fun is going to go here. It's going to go um, kind of on actually in the middle of your zip strip. Okay, so it goes over your photos and then um, trick or treat is going to go in the center. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put uh, some foam tape on it. Let's do this piece here so it'll fit on that. Now I am going to grab there it is okay my anti-static pouch okay and then I am gonna tap this and I'm gonna get the stick off of my sticker okay and that's just gonna help there we go okay so now what this is gonna do is I have my sticker we also have slightly messy hands now all right, and tweezers are my friend. All right, so then this is gonna go right next. And then my eek, I'm gonna do flat next to it. Okay, and so you kind of see our ghost peeking up from behind our tombstones, okay? But wanted to give a little bit of dimension there. Okay, uh, up next is spooky. And then that one. Um, now, I do feel like spooky gets a little bit lost. So um, this one's not in the workshop. Just a little extra tip is I'm going to go ahead and take my intense black ink. And I am going to run the edges towards me kind of at an angle. All right. And this is just edging my, my sticker. And it gives it just a little bit more because that is kind of a white on white pattern. And this is going to help make it pop just a little bit. And then um, I do want it to pop a little bit more since I have a photo that it's not a big deal if I cover up. I'm going to kind of overlap it. And then I'm also going to add just some more foam dots. I think that added dimension is going to be super cute. This is going to go 
right here my spooky. Okay. All right. So then, oh no, I totally smeared that. Okay. I'm definitely going to have to kind of, yeah. I normally let my journalings dry before I kind of slap them on because I am, I am messy. So let's see what we can do. I'll show you the original way and we'll see how I'm going to modify. So I have this candelabra. We are going to do crow's feet and then we are going to do this candy corn and then you also need one of the spiders. Okay. So spider goes on the spider web right in the center there. How cute. Super simple. And then we're supposed to kind of stack these here. Okay. Uh, I am going to do my candelabra. I like it right here. I like it where the web is coming down in between the candles themselves. Okay. But instead of putting my crow's feet and my corn there, I am I'm going to do this. There we go. Okay. So I've kind of covered up my little goof with um, running that line. And then I still have some room to journal um, this event. There's a couple layouts of this event, so I'll have plenty of room for other journaling. Okay. All right. Up next on our sticker sheets, um, we have our cauldron and our kitty cat. We have our frames. So we're going to build kind of this cluster. Okay. Um, and then there's some other things that will kind of be adding up here, but let's work on our cluster first, okay? Um, so these are going to be kind of going down here. So I'm thinking I might have the cat and the cauldron um, where they're both on that same level. I'm not sure. Let's see. And then the idea is that this is kind of framing behind the kitty cat and that cauldron. Okay, and then I like the stickers because they that you can just peel them, you can stick them. Oh, I'm kind of off frame there. Sorry, you guys. All right, so I'm going to kind of play with this until I have it how I really like it. I kind of want to see that handle a little bit. Okay. So I'm thinking something kind of like this. Yeah. So you have that cat sitting right on the edge of the black. So I'm just going to kind of lightly set that down so I can still move it because um, there are a couple more elements. There is this frame with the heart. That's all one piece. And then this black frame is coming out, but there's not actually um, uh, much going in it besides a heart. Okay. So this is going to go right here which I don't know if I like it up there. I feel like it's that same color on the same color. You know, maybe I'll ink the edges or something. Um, but you know what? I like, I like this better. Okay. So instead of having this one here, I'm going to alternate it and I'm going to bring that up here. Okay. And then this frame here and then this little heart, Oh, this little heart's going to get lost. Hmm. Let's see. I don't know what other hearts I'm using. Um, oh, but I do see that I am using the star on this page. So I'm going to swap, I like the star this way, and I'm going to put the star here, and then I will put the heart where the star would be instead. Okay, so swapping elements out to kind of build your clusters. Just because the workshop has it a certain way, you can kind of modify for your photos, especially you if you swap these out and wanted to do an extra four by six or different things. Okay. All right. So we have some small little things to add on and that includes our dots. Where are my dots? Uh -oh. Hold on. I think I was. Hmm. I've lost my melon dots. I think, I don't think it was these. I think it was actually dots. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, that's 
looks weird. I thought I had everything out with my workshop. Huh. Is it on my shelf? Well, I guess I will have to use these ones. There should be the, the, they're all just circles and they should be the same three colors. Hmm. Well, again, we'll make it work. Okay. So we are adding a couple little pizzazz to the corner here. So this is now going to be this kind of peach one and then that Minter Glacier. So they are gonna come up here in the corner with this guy, our little ghost, and now we have a heart there. And then all that is left is adding some candy, some more hearts. So the candy is gonna come down here and work well with kind of me hiding those lines. Okay, and then I need another one right here. Okay, and then we also have, uh, let's see, just making sure. Oh, some hearts, some more hearts. Okay, we're gonna have a heart up here right there and then we are gonna have this smaller one right there okay so super cute super simple and then um, I'm gonna bring in these dots hmm uh, you probably have I don't know where they went oh, my toddler keeps sneaking in here he really wants to craft with me, and I have certain things I let him play with, and I'm wondering if he saw the dots, and they're so pretty and shiny. Oh, and of course this one's missing all the circles. Okay. Well, then again, some hearts would be cute on here. Maybe I'll put some hearts. Okay, so you probably have just circles, I think. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Do you Are your dots like these, or are your dots just circles? Okay. Okay. Um, but this one is going to be simple. I am going to add a large next to my candelabra, and then I'm going to add a medium next to my candelabra. Okay. And then we need some dots up here, um, next to this cat. Actually, I feel like some stars next to this cat. And then I love that we have different sizes and different shapes. Okay, and then I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a big one up at the top here. And then a medium and a small next to this potion that's brewing. Oh yeah, that's cute. And putting it against that black kind of helps it stand out a little bit more. Okay. All right, all that is left about on this one is for me to add my journaling, but super cute and simple. I like that this didn't have a ton of stamping and die cuts for the layout. Um, you're just building some cute kind of clusters, even that are kind of making these fun scenes. And then I love how many photos you're able to fit on here. So good variety. Okay. All right, so that is technically layout number two. So then we're gonna work on layout number three. All right, layout three. There we go. I gotta grab water. Okay. I'm kind of backwards or upside down. Okay. Uh, we will start with the left hand layout. Now, if you ha don't have everything sorted, you can kind of pull your mats, your photo mats aside. Oops, that one came aside. Um, this little 
polka dot strip. It's got that on the back side, the smaller one. That is going to be for our title, so you can kind of set that one aside. Um, we are going to have the spiders at the top. Um, this black one at the bottom. Okay. And then uh, what is going to happen with this one is we're going to build it and everything is going to be a half inch from the bottom and a half inch in from the edge. So you're going to put it against that right hand side. So I'm going to start with the bottom and we're going to kind of work our way up and to the left. So again, you want to be a half inch. Perfect. Okay. And then we are going to work our way from the inside out. So this one I'm going to glue down at the top afterwards. So it looks like we start with this hero page. Let me just lay everything out. And then we're going to have the melon stripes. And then we're going to have this kind of picture frame page. Okay. And then we'll end it with this cute little stars. Okay. All right, so that just works our way across. Okay, so we're gonna glue this sucker down. There you go. But yeah, if you have not ordered or tried the Tombow Mono Air, I don't know what brand adhesive you like or you use, but um, I am, I'm super impressed with it. So, oops, I'm super moving everything around. All right, and then last little zippy strip. And then I can put those spiders at the tippity top. All right, and that is the base, okay? Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put my photos on their photo mats real quick. Okay. Oh, so this Halloween, happy Halloween banner was, yeah, it was intense. Uh, we had to blow it up with straws and then we get it on and then my mom strings it and she spells it correctly and all that. And then it's like, it took her forever to get it on. And then it was like, oh no she switched the L's around. It still spells Halloween, but now it's backwards. Well, like, you know, you, orange, black, black, it doesn't alternate. So we decided it was fine and we left it like that. So I doubt anyone would have noticed minus the fact I'm pointing it out. Uh, but yeah, I just remember that. And my mom was so concerned, like, oh no. All right, so we're gonna have these here. Um, it looks like we're about, I don't know, maybe three eighths of an inch in from the edge. Um, maybe three eighths of an inch between my photos. Okay. And then um, we'll make our cute little title here. Okay. So then this guy's gonna line up there. Again, I still really liked this, um, this frame, this photo frame page. Okay. Alrighty. So that is there. So next is this little black and white polka dot. Okay. So this is going to go with the bottom of our photo. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to kind of push it up against the edge and to the bottom here. That way I kind of have that same consistent gap around it. And then our title is going to kind of be built on this one. Okay. 
All right, so that's the paper pieces. I'm gonna do the same thing. Let's build that right hand layout and then we can put all the stickers down at once. So we will set that aside. Okay. And so this is a very similar layout. Um, so I like this workshop because it kind of shows you how you can have just your patterns of paper and then you can just put photos on top. You don't have to have like certain special like, I don't know, um, designs and, and, you know, mirrors and circles or all that. So I like the kind of simplicity of this. So. Okay. All right. So I am going to do my stars. Okay, and again, that's just going to start right at the bottom, and I'm a half inch from the bottom edge. Okay, and then I'm going to start with cats, which there is stuff going all directions, but for some reason the cats stand out the most to me, so I'm going to make the cats upright, um, even though that does now make other things upside down. Uh, I'm going with what I think is the pattern that is most prominent okay and then we have our cardstock okay that cute melon stripe and then that itty bitty little strip and we are going to be on that same um, cat pattern one. However, this one's not as noticeable. Doesn't really have much of like a heads or tails, so they're all just pretty much sideways. Okay, and then the cute spiders are going to top it off. Okay, all right. And then these, I'm going to pull in my left layout, bring them next to each other, because this is going to continue. So I'm going to match that gap, and then I have these guys right here that's going to go in line with, with this one here. So I'm matching kind of my horizontals. And then that same gap, I'm consistent. Okay, again, I don't always measure. I like to eyeball a lot of things. Um, it's faster. I normally, I will measure, like, things from the bottom, right? Especially because you don't want to be, oh, I suddenly ended up with, like, an inch at the top and, like, a very itty-bitty strip at the bottom. So, okay. Oh, there it goes. Alrighty, so now we are on to stair stairs right over here. Okay, so this one has a really cute little um, journaling frame that we're going to use. And this is going to be a cluster. We need our Eye of Newt for our uh, journaling potion. And then we need this cute little pumpkin down here. And again, I'm just going to kind of overlap them. And then this is going to overlap onto my cardstock there. Oh, where's my phone? Ah, uh, husband will get it. Mm. And then we are going to use this guy. Call from Hold on, you guys. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. All right, um, and then we are going to also bring in this heart. Okay, now um, they have it on top of our journaling. However, um, I, I do have a decent amount to say. Uh, so I think, where do I want it? 
I think right up there. Yeah, I like it right there. Okay. If you don't have a lot to journal, then that's an easy way to bring these in and overlap it so you don't have to add journaling. Okay. All right. So next up is going to be this poison. Actually, we're going to start with beautiful or boo tiffle. So that little cutie is going to go right up here and it is just barely going to overlap. And then we're going to be using a bunch of these stickers across the bottom here. To start us off, we have this cute little lighter pumpkin. Some poison. There's nothing says scrapbooking like some poison. Or the next one up is some love elixir. Do not mix those two up. So I'm going to start here. And we're going to work our way across. And I'm pretty close to the bottom edge. And we have some overlapping. Okay. And then up next is going to be some more pumpkins. And this little guy, I'm going to have overlap just a little bit. And then I think we have some candy left over. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to use a spiral and I'm going to do one of these. Um, I don't know what kind of candy you want to call that, but we're going to kind of just overlap them in the corner there. Uh, we have another heart and that is going to go next to this guy. Let me grab my tweezers for my placement. Ooh, right up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'm going to tuck another piece of candy. Can do it behind the pumpkin. Okay. And then let's see. What am I missing? Oh, you know what? There is another piece of candy on this pumpkin, too. Can I get back underneath him? Uh, let's see here. Mm, that, and then let me grab the spiral. Uh, and then I'm going to grab... I feel like I need something else over here. Okay, black star. All right. I believe that is it for these guys. So there are a couple extra stickers. So these, most of these are used on the first layout. Okay, so again, let me kind of bring in my first layout. Okay. Um, I do have a YouTube video for this one. So this is layout number one. However, they have, I think it's seven photos on here. And I did not have that many. Um, I just had one picture of this night where we dressed up for Dungeons and Dragons, my group. Um, and I just wanted to scrapbook that and journal about it. Um, so some things on this one. This, you glue your little piece of paper down and then you want to tear up towards you to get this fun rip and reveal. Okay. Um, this is from that sticker sheet. And then there was a ton of stickers that were used on this layout. A bunch are actually still left and I just pulled from here. Um, but if you want to see how this one came together, um, I will put it in the group. Uh, I think I just posted it to YouTube. Okay. All right, so this all, oh, actually, sorry, I almost forgot. We do need our dots, okay? Um, so I like the stars over here because I have some stars. So I'm going to do that up there because it's not going to hide too much of my journaling. 
And I feel like this kind of already has enough and the melon doesn't really show up on melon anyway. I think I need something up here. Yeah, I think I'm going to do some more hearts because there are quite a few hearts mixed in this layout. So I'm going to do that one and then I come, come down here and do a small one right above it. Oh yeah, that's cute. And then you know what? I'm going to bring in a medium one. There we go. Oops. Mm, yeah, there. Right up there. Ooh, okay. That's super cute. All right. So that is our completed layout. Super simple, super fun. Wow, yeah, we've done two layouts and it's only been like 50 minutes. Okay, oh, mine is journaling. Okay. All right, so the next up is a super fun thing. I've never made these before. Um, the little treat pouches, okay? So I went ahead and did one of each um, and I'll be showing you some variations and stuff on them. But uh, the idea behind it is so I can write some uh, some cute little thing or to or from on here. Some of them have the elements on the top. Some of them have them on the front of the card. This one says, um, so glad we're such cool friends. Oh, am I stuck? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Um, right. And then these are just the right size, right? No tricks, just treats. Um, I am going to be sliding in a Kit Kat. Um, these are going to be for my coworkers. We're all teachers, and it's going to say, um, "Here's a break, right?" Because of Kit Kats, and then I'm going to give them out. Uh, we have a meeting that Monday. Actually, we normally have Monday meetings, so this is the perfect little Halloween treat to give them. All right, so let's go ahead and make them. So you are going to want. I'm using my my bone folder, um, and then I am also going to be using my paper trimmer okay so let me scooch these up and then i have a bunch of oh and then i'm also using the um the adhesive tape it's kind of like a stronger thicker tape okay uh, you can also use like liquid glass that would probably be, work pretty good so that one's a really nice strong glue okay so i have all my different ones that we're doing um, so I guess let's go ahead and start with this ghost. All right. So um, these, they should already be pre-cut and they are, uh, what, six inches? So what I am going to do is I am going to mark it off at, what is it, half an inch? I think it's actually quarter of an inch. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me double check. Yeah, quarter of an inch. Sorry, as I... Oh no, it is half an inch, half an inch. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it sideways. Now, this particular one, okay, I want this on the outside for the ghost. So I need to figure out where's the top. It's gonna to be here. And then I am going to score in the line, okay? And then uh, I'm also going to score at three inches. And then the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna fold this over. And then I, I someone give me a tip to use your ruler. So line up the ruler. And then it makes it easy to kind of fold and then you don't kind of go wonky. And then I can fold it down all the way. Oh, well, that worked pretty well. Um, okay, so then I am gonna go ahead and actually, you know what, I'm gonna fold both sides first, then I'm going to tape it. Um, this one is a little bit wider, so it's a little bit easier. I like to line up the edges on a wider fold like that, and then press kind of from the center out. Okay. But it's super cute. I like the little, and you can kind of figure out which one's front, which one's back. All right. But I'm going to use my tape runner and I'm going to run it all the way across. And that is just going to keep that nice and flat. Um, I, these, I didn't quite run it across and then I don't know if you can tell, but see how it's kind of like open on that side and it's kind of hard to go back and put the glue in after because I could use a liquid. 
All right, and then this, I'm gonna pull in my adhesive tape. This is um, Z5024, in case you uh, wanna know. But this seems to have held up pretty well. I was putting treats in and out of them. Um, let's see, there it is. Okay. So then you want it right, right on the edge, like as close to the edge as you can possibly get. All right. So I place that and then I am going to simply shoop it flat with the bottom. And then I am going to rough estimate. Uh oh, I think I did too much. Let's see how much I need for the bottom. And, oh, 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 there we go, okay, and then I'm going to peel it up, now you can use your nails like I am on this one, these are super staticky, all right, and then I'm going to attempt to line it up, and then I push it down, and it's pretty much not going anywhere, all right. Okay, so that is the base. So now we need the other little pieces. So on this particular one, we have this cute little ghost. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a ghost. And so I was playing around with coloring. Um, on making white objects look white, you color the outside. So I'm gonna show you um, just coloring the inside of this one. So this is the brown gray shades and I'm gonna start with the dark. And I'm going to color in the eyeballs. And then his mouth. Okay. Um, and then with the light, uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of shade his edges. Just giving him a little bit of highlights. And I'm trying to be very, like, very skinny, very minimal with this. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with coral and I'm going to go on the lightest and we're going to give our ghost a cute little blush. Okay. And then that is going to get adhered. onto our card and that gets slid in. So what do you think? Do you like just the outline or do you prefer it done in black? Right? So you can play around and see what kind of coloring you prefer for your treat pouches. Now um, this one does not actually have anything stamped on it. Okay. Um, but the others, these two do. So if the if your icon is on the pouch, then you had a sentiment stamped on. If your icon is on the this part, then there is no sentiment. So, but again, you can play with how you want. All right. So then let's make a couple more of these. Oh, there it is. I've like I lost my stack. Okay. Oh, let's do um the cute uh Kit Kat next. Okay. So this is going to be the same one. It's just reverse for the two of them. All right, so just like before, we are going to do our half inch. And then we are going to be three inches in. Okay. And then this particular one, I am gonna fold back. And you know what? I don't even know if I really need the ruler. Yeah, I just folded it and it's fine. And then this one again, I'm going to aim for squaring it up. You know, maybe if I had really thick cardstock? I don't know. Yeah. Right? You hear tips and tricks and you try them out. And sometimes they're fabulous and sometimes you're like, well, okay. All right. Let's do this all the way across. Oh, apparently I am doing um, this one, not this one. 
So we're jumping around since I folded it the wrong way. Okay. Lined up right at those edges. And then notice this one I made a little bit short, but think about what you're putting in these. Um, I'm planning to put a Kit Kat, so um, a Kit Kat is not going to slip through that, so I'm not too worried. Okay. Now, um, if you push this down, like the harder you push it down, I feel like the easier it is to kind of peel a corner up. Okay. So that's just some tips on that red line tape. Again, matching up your corners, and then you are good with your little fold and ta-da, treat pouch, okay? All right, so then I guess let's go ahead and make this one. Um, so for that, um, you should have some little extra scraps of white um, and we are gonna simply stamp on, on that, okay? So I'm gonna use my foam and then um, we are going to need uh, the trick or treat and then our inks. And we are using peach, mink, and intense black. Okay, so this is what we need our mink for. Um, that way it kind of still coordinates. I have a small itty bitty little block I like to use. Does this fit? Oh, but that's, uh, it's too small of an itty bitty block. So I will use this one. Okay. So I have, um, what's it called? We are making three of each. Okay. And so, um, I already have one done, so I'm going to stamp two more. So make sure if you're doing this, you are stamping all three at once to save yourself some time, but I'm going to work my way from the bottom to the top. So this is my mink ink again. I've used this already, but if you have not, make sure you are seasoning your new stamp sets. Okay, and then um, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stamp that at the bottom, ink it back up, and then I'm gonna, oh, why is it go? That was weird. A little uh, string or something got on it. Okay. And where it is. I was like, I lost my stamp chamois. Okay. So next up is trick or treat. And that one does fit on my itty bitty little one by one. And that is an intense black. And so I'm just going to kind of like line it up. There's going to be a little bit of a gap between my stamp and there, you can see it kind of in here. I guess I can let me zoom in for you guys. There you go. Okay, and then this, all right, trick or treat. Clean that off. And then last is the peach. So I got my peach. I'm gonna ink up the top. And then I'm going to aim for about that same gap between the trick or treat and the top of that. And the nice thing is this is stamped, so this is really easy to do a couple of them. And then if you didn't like one or got slightly off, you want to use some extras for cards. All right. But what we are going to do is we're going to simply fussy cut. Now, um, I do want to do a gap. I don't want to cut right against that. If I cut right against, it's easier to see kind of the any errors or things uh, that aren't quite perfect. Uh, but notice how I'm turning my paper. So turn the paper, not necessarily the scissors, makes it a little bit easier. All right, so I'm gonna cut both of these out so I am all set. Oops, that one ended up a little wonky. So I will go back and trim that little piece up right there. There we go. All right. 
And so these definitely need to be popped up on some foam. Let's see, I will do one at the top and then I'm gonna do one at the bottom. That's good enough. Okay, trick or treat. And then this one is going to be stamped uh, no trick, just treats. And that is going to be in intense black. Let me flip that around. No tricks, just treats. And that is going to go at the top. And then while this is out, I am also going to stamp the other ones, so stamp all three while you have it out. Again, I am only doing two because I already have one of them done. And then I'll slide right in. Okay, I'll keep that for the, the other one I'm gonna make. Okay, now let's actually try to make the cat this time, which means you need I need to pay attention to the way I am folding. All right, so we have our half inch and three inches. Okay, and then I want the this side on the outside, so I'm going to be folding this down. Okay, and then this, I'm going to line up, do my fold, and then I will add my tape. Okay, where's the edge? This one's not too bad if you lose the edge, um, it because it's got that, uh, that layer on top of it, it's pretty easy to find. So. long and right at the bottom so again push it down really hard that will help make it easier to peel off and just peel off the red line tape okay there we go staticky line it up all right Okay, so then this one gets a So Ghoul We're Friends, or something like that. I keep saying that one wrong. Um, what is it? So Glad We Are Ghoul Friends. And that is going to go with the peach ink. So again, I'm going to bring in my foam squishy. And then I am stamping on the dark side of mink each time. Uh, peach. Okay. And this just gets stamped at the top. Again, don't forget to do all three of yours. Okay. That's it for that one. I might go back and, and stamp the no tricks, just treats on these guys. All right. <clears throat> so we need the cat, right? We need the cute kitty for this. Uh, there's one of them. Okay. So I already die cut, stamped this in intense black. It's always a good idea if you're going to color something in intense black, give it a couple minutes to dry. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start with the uh, light. It's the coral blend first. Um, I'm going to do the light and I am going to color the inside of the ears. Apparently we are very popular today. Oh, 
Okay. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to go back in with the medium. And then I'm just going to kind of color in the little little sides, one side of the eyes. So make sure you do the same corner on both. And then I'm going to do a little bit of medium right at the top of that collar. And then I am going to do it on the inside corner of the ears. Okay. Then I'm going to go back with the light. I'm going to make sure that that's blended together. Okay. And then it'll it'll dry. All right. Now I'm going to go in with this is the brown gray shades. Again, um, if you do not have the traveling markers, uh, I know one of the sets is on sale on Amazon right now. It's like 45 bucks for 24 of these. I'm very tempted to buy another set because I think they were like 100 or like 90 when I bought one of my sets. Uh, one of them is like $88. The other one's like 44 So, So if you do not have them, um, I would highly recommend getting them. They are fabulous. And... Uh, Definitely one of my favorite things to color with. Um, colored pencils and watercolors are fun, but I don't know. These just have such vibrance. Okay. So I'm going to color this cute little kitty. Oh, I missed his nose or her nose. Gender neutral kitty. Boop. All right. But I'm going to go ahead and color in the entire face with the light shade. And then I will go back in and do some blending. I do like to kind of um, do a lot of circular motions when I'm blending with the tri blends. Okay. So now I want to kind of think, oh, actually, I missed very, very thinly around the eye there. Okay. So I do want to think where are going to be some of my darker parts of my cat. Um, so I'm going to do the outside of the ears. And I'm actually just going to kind of do the entire top outline. And then um, I thought it'd be fun to do kind of like a like a, more of a mark on the kitty cat. So I'm doing kind of a darker shade, like a triangle, but I'm, I don't want it to be a harsh triangle. I want it to be kind of a subtle, um, more natural looking pattern on it. Right. I missed that little piece right there. All right. So I'm going to do that. I thought that's something kind of fun, a little bit different than the other one. I'm going to go back and hit his nose real quick with the coral. There we go. And then for the light, so you, you have three different shades, so you can really kind of play it up, have some fun um, doing some different like kitty cat calico patterns. Um, and then uh, I am just coloring in the entire cat. Notice I'm not really caring about the lines right now, just that outline. And that is because um, I am going to add some shading to his arms and legs, and that is what's going to matter. So I can kind of quickly color him in. Okay. And then um, <clears throat> I am going to do kind of darker paws. So I'm going to do the under, like lower half of his paws would be where the shadow is. And then on his legs, um, since they're kind of large, I'm going to kind of just do the whole little the whole little leg and I'm doing the inside to give me some kind of dimension and then I'm going to go in and hit his tail and again that is with the light side and then I'm going to go in with the medium and I'm going to do the outside edge there we go all right super cute and so again, if I wanted some more contrast, I can do kind of the light and the dark. Um, I wanted more of like a subtle, you can see his little triangle patch on his face. I think that's really cute. All right, so I'm gonna put a square at the bottom and then I'll probably do two of these. One kind of poking into each ear slash his face. 
There we go. I'm not too worried about a bunch of foam on these because I kind of anticipate my coworkers being like, oh my god, how cute, and I don't think these are going to last very long. Okay. And then, so glad we're ghoul friends. Okay. So then all that is left is the Skelly Boy. All right. So this is going to be the bottles. All right. And then three inches. And then again, I want the bottles. So this is the only one where I felt like um, the back side of this wasn't that exciting. Right? I do like the bottles, though. I was tempted to not fold this one and just, like, leave it. Oh. Uh, just leave it up instead of having that edge. I don't know. Okay. All right, look at that. Or that, or I could even hit this with, like, a, a black marker or something to give it some contrast, something different. So let's add our red line, and then we have a skeleton to color in. Ooh. Okay. I thought the skeleton was fun. I like how he kind of like hangs on your project. Okay. All right, again, just kind of pushing down hard and this makes these super easy to peel off. Okay, I know I used these before when I've made, um, uh, I made a mini album and I use this tape for that. Also, I have a, let me see. I have a mini album base that I started. I just haven't actually gotten around to decorating, um, but I use the red line tape to glue everything in there. I was still, I'm, I'm waiting for the right paper to play with this one. So I had built it and something will happen with that. All right, um, this one just gives a skeleton. So again, um, I was playing with, instead of coloring the skeleton, you color the outside and that makes the skeleton pop and be white. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this one a little bit different. Um, so this one is literally just going to be, actually, I want to be on the dark of the brown, uh, is this brown gray shades? Yeah, I'm going to color his eyeballs. His cute little nose. And his very small mouth. I am going to do his blush. And then I think I'm going to go in with the light. I feel like he needs something. Um, and I think I am going to shade kind of like the underside of him. That is the light, right? Yep, that's light. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of do um, like the lower half of the bones. I'm going to do this side. I feel like I need, like it needs something. Okay. And then let's do... Okay, the underside of the rib cage. I'm going to do... underside of the skull and you know what I'm gonna do like part of the skull okay that adds a lot to him I like that I don't know what do you guys like do you prefer that blackness where you can kind of see that skeleton pop or do you like kind of that subtle shading on him 
I'm gonna grab another one of my cards and this one is super cute because look how he tucks on it like oh my gosh I love the designers um, so I'm gonna put some there and then I'm gonna put some on his hands because um, there's not like a ton and then all right look at that he just kind of sinks in right you can see there's not a ton that overlaps and then this is going to slide in. I'm probably going to go ahead and stamp. Um, I feel like this; these are a little bit plain. So these ones I'm going to go ahead and add in. What is it? No tricks, just treats. Um, there's my ink block. I'm probably going to do this on, on most of them. I feel, like, I feel like it needs it. And then on the back side, that's where um, I'll probably add my little handwritten note. Um, enjoy your break and then give them all each a little Kit Kat. So I'm very excited to hand these out. Okay, so super fun, super easy. I like the little treat pouch, especially for um, those thin little candy bars. Uh, and I thought the Kit Kat was, um, was good. It was a Kit Kat or I was trying to find a hundred grand to give them. Uh, cause I thought it'd be fun to give, give, giving you a hundred grand. Um, but, uh, they, those ones are trickier to find nowadays. So Kit Kat, give me a break. Okay. There we go. So that is everything. So let's do a quick recap. So we got our skeletons. We got the black or we have just our gray. Same thing with the ghosts. All right. We have our buildable, uh, little, um, candy corn, our cute little cat, and then um, from there we made some layouts. So let me let me zoom back out for that. So here was layout number three, and then we had layout number two. Um, and then just as a recap, this is layout number one. I did modify it. Okay. It's still pretty easy to put together the base you're still using. Um, and then this is the same. I will put the, the link for the YouTube video in my group so you can find that easily or so on my YouTube channel. And then, um, some extra things because I have leftovers and my goal is to use up everything lately. That's been one of my personal goals. So um, I really like the bottles, so I had fun using the stamps. And then these are fussy cut from my scraps. Okay, and again, I didn't photo mat because I did it on black, and I was just able to kind of pop up some of those pieces. And then that's going to end up um, going next to this layout in my scrapbook because I normally put everything in pairs. Um, this is actually, this is retired Christmas paper. This is like the... Sweet as honey paper from last year. Um, but I use this stamp set. Um, these are Christmas, red and green Christmas sequins. Um, red shimmer brushes. I did some stamping. This is one of my favorite um, thin cuts that I have. Some silver embossing thread. Um, I used first and second generation to get like this creepy foresty look. Um, added my journaling. Uh, these are all some Halloween stamp sets that are, you can still get them. The fence is a die cut. I think that came with either the tree or, or that. They're like Halloween buddies, but those ones were a lot of fun to play with. Uh, I got them last year, so it was neat to do, uh, I did cards last year, but I didn't do a layout. And then some other ideas. I did some random stamping um, around the edge. You can't even really tell that this is that corner piece. Um, and then that little spider, some using the dots and the spooky, and again, some more embellishing thread. I really like to kind of match and and stamp on the envelopes, especially because I store my, my, mate, my completed cards with an envelope. So it's a nice little thing. Um, oh, this, here's another ghost, which just to show you the difference, friends finding them all okay so here is a ghost just outlined in black 
Here's a ghost not outlined using the, I think it's the gray brown marker. This is outlined in black with the gray brown marker. So you can see kind of the three different looks and kind of see what's your favorite. You can play around. Um, I did use the peach and this is, um, oh, it's one of like the background stamps, um, the new one um, that I got and it, I thought that was really, really nice to kind of subtle. I didn't want to add too much more. I really liked the black shimmer on it. And then I just did a little matching ghost on the, the envelope to that one. And then um, this one, uh, we hadn't used the cute pumpkin. And so I wanted to do that, some more heat embossing because I had it out and was going to town on it. Um, and then I made the cat kind of popping out of that pumpkin. Um, other things, in case you didn't realize, the stamp set has three jack-o'-lantern faces. And those you can actually stamp onto the pumpkins themselves. So that's kind of fun. Uh, but I thought that was a little bit too busy for my particular card. But really love it. If you don't have this set, you can still order. You have until the 31st to get all of this fabulous fun. All right. As always, thanks for crafting with me, you guys, and craft on.